Hi, I'm Dave Granger, and I'd like to welcome you to the Guilds Classics. This is a YouTube channel that showcases the various skills, talents, and crafts that the employees here use to restore people's cars. I'm Al and I'm the lead metal worker here at the Guild and today we are going to be making an adapter for the uh, rat rod. We've got a uh, antique Packard straight eight flathead and it needs to be mated up to more modern turbo 350 automatic transmission and that's not an adapter that you can sort of normally find um, online and order, so we're just gonna make one from scratch. We're gonna do it old school uh, here in the shop. We're just gonna use the lathe and a drill press. Um, we're gonna do all of our layout manually by hand. The first step is to measure everything. Um, we gotta figure out what our bolt circles are on the torque converter. The torque converter has three holes in it and it has a center boss that we're going to pick up with our uh, center spindle on the adapter. And then on the flywheel, we have six holes on a slightly different bolt circle, a larger bolt circle. And then there is a hole in the center of the flywheel that we're gonna pick up with the uh, spindle. And the spindle itself that the adapter plate is attached to is going to be what keeps everything dead on center and our bolt circles are going to have clearance holes um, so we've got just enough wiggle room to get the nuts and bolts in and the spindle is going to align everything and uh, the plate's going to get bolted down to the flywheel. I'm actually just using a sharpened pick by hand to start my center punch um, and I've got a little jeweler's loop, a little magnifying loop that I use to get myself lined up. I found that um, even laying stuff out by hand you can easily hold maybe five thousandths of an inch of accuracy, which for the purposes of this is gonna be totally fine. Um, so the first thing I do is I take my sharpened pick and I just put a little dimple in. Then I can use my scribe as a prick punch and get a slightly deeper hole in it. And then I can finally use my center punch and get something that I can then drill. And uh, when I drill my holes, it's really important also that once I've got my center punch, I use either a spotting drill in this case, or you can use a center drill from a lathe if you don't have a spotting drill to put a little dimple into your plate because otherwise your drill bit can wander and if your drill bit wanders, then your holes are off and you're out of luck. So uh, in this case, I take a lot of time and I carefully spot each hole and then I drill the smaller holes from there. Um, if it's a larger hole that I need to drill, um, and the drill bit has a big web on the point, I'll pre-drill it with say a 3 16ths or a quarter inch hole before then following it with something bigger. So now we've got our square plate with our circle laid out on it. We've got our holes drilled. We've got the ones that need to be reamed, reamed. We've got our counter bores for our bolt circle in the center that's gonna hold the spindle on. Um, and it's time to put it on the lathe. Uh, now it's a big square and I don't wanna one, it won't spin up in the lathe um, with the big square. So I'll take it over to the bandsaw. We're gonna turn the bandsaw way up um, and we're gonna use a little bit of light oil to lubricate the cut. And uh, we're gonna rough out the outside diameter. So we're gonna hold maybe a 16th of an inch too big on the outside diameter. And uh, then we'll be able to clean it up on the lathe. The other interesting thing when you're doing something like this is how do you grab a big flat plate and hold it properly on center in the lathe in this case, we've drilled three extra holes, and those holes are for mounting the plate onto the lathe chuck. And uh, this chuck happens to have reversible jaws, 
And so we're going to remove those uh, reversible jaws. We use the threaded holes in the three jaw chuck to mount the plate. We bolt the plate on. Um, it happens to be on center because our holes are on center. Um, and we can use that then to clean up the outside and to drill our center bore that is going to align the spindle. I'm going to start by, I have a, I've got an inch and a half annular cutter, which is going to rough out the hole in the center. And then I'm just going to use the boring bar to bore to the size of my spindle. And once we do that, we can um, just use a file to deburr and chamfer all of the edges and uh, move on to machining our spindle. The next step in this process is to make the spindle. Now, the spindle is what aligns everything. Um, so it's important that everything stay absolutely concentric on that. One way to make it would be to cut a shoulder on it that would be that boss uh, and then flip it around and then face it and then drill a drill and bore uh, the center bore that fits onto the torque converter but we don't happen to have a four jaw chuck. We only have a three jaw chuck. And a three jaw chuck, um, all the jaws move equally uh, in. And as accurate as it is, it's still not gonna be absolutely on center every time. You can grab something once and then you can turn it down and everything's concentric. But if you let go of it and flip it around or grab it any other way, it's gonna be slightly out of round and that's not gonna work for us here, which means I'm gonna drill and bore from one side. I'm gonna then cut the diameter down nice and evenly, just take a hair off to make sure everything's concentric. And then I'm actually gonna go in and cut my shoulder on the inside of the part up closer to the chuck of the jaw. The last thing I need to do is make my bosses that um, connect the adapter plate to the torque converter. So we got three of those. My overall space needs to be three and three quarters. Um, I'm gonna take uh, three eighths of an inch off of that for the thickness of the plate. And so I need three pieces that are gonna be, they're gonna be exactly three and three eighths of an inch. One side of those bosses are going to be tapped and the other side are going to be drill, drilled and reamed for a dowel pin. And so uh, first thing I do is I uh, face center drill and uh, tap drill 5 16 for a 3 8 16 thread. And then I will flip them over, um, roughly measure the proper height. Uh, machine off, face off the amount that I need to until I'm, you know, maybe 10 or 15 thousandths oversized. And then I'm going to measure them on the surface plate with the height gauge to figure out how much I need to take off to make them exactly 3.375. Um, so I'll measure each one individually. I'll then put it back in the lathe. I'll touch off um, with the cutting tool on the face and I'll use my digital readout to move over um, the exact amount that I need to and take a final facing cut and that will give me my um, exact height for the boss. Um, all three of them I'm going to check. Uh, once I know they're all exactly equal I can bolt the whole thing together. Next step is to take the plate and drop it onto the spindle. Make sure we've got a good fit and uh, we do and then I'm going to use a transfer punch to transfer my counterboard holes so that I can drill with a number seven drill into the spindle and then tap for quarter 20 and then bolt the uh, spindle and the adapter plate together. 
gone nice and carefully and we've taken our time and uh, it's paid off. And uh, now we want to get a sense of whether or not it's in or out of balance. Originally I was thinking that I probably would have to jump through a couple of hoops to get everything balanced and we were going to go through a static balancing process. But frankly, everything came out really well and it felt pretty well balanced already. So we're going to spin it up in the lathe um, to start at 1000 RPM and see if there's any vibration. Once there's no vibration at 1,000 RPM, we're going to spin it up to 2,000, which is the max that this lathe will spin. And frankly, it's so smooth that uh, I don't think we're going to have to do very much to balance it. I think we might be able to go with it. But we're going to do one more check just to uh, get a sense of the concentricity and the balance of the part. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to put it in the lathe between two live centers, and we're just going to spin it by hand 10 times and we're gonna mark where it stops. If it stops in the same place over and over again, that means it's got a heavy spot and that heavy spot is causing it to slow down and stop. We're just gonna spin it by hand, spin it up 10 times and we're gonna mark where it stops. Um, if the marks tend to cluster all in the same place, it means that's the light spot on the top and the bottom where it stops is the heavy spot on the flywheel and that's causing it to stop there. If there tends to be a random distribution of those marks and it's not clustered in any one place, that means that within the sensitivity of the friction between the live centers, um, we've got a piece that's as balanced as we can get it and as balanced as we need it to be. Fortunately, after 10 spins, there's no clustering. We've got marks more or less randomly all around the circumference of the flywheel, so I think we're good to go. I'm gonna hand off the flywheel to Johnny and he's gonna install it and then uh, we can run the thing and uh, see how everything runs. I'm pretty sure that it's within, uh, within spec and uh, it should work. Looking forward to the next time I've gotta make a big precision part and I can use uh, some of these techniques and see what else we can do. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want more information, visit our podcast. The uh, link is in the description below.